So yesterday, every trip, we don't have any COVID signs. We have no signs of COVID. But after every trip, we do the responsible thing, every reporting trip, and we go and get a COVID test because as part of our reporting, we do have to put ourselves in situations where we are around people and we're in a pandemic. So we immediately go and get a COVID test. We went yesterday and they were out. So we went first thing this morning and they said, okay, we still have tests, but there's going to be a wait. Three hours later, and by the way, I don't know what time it was that they ran out, but not that long after we got there, again, first thing in the morning, they were out of tests. So it took around three hours for us to actually get our tests. And once again, they, they ran out of tests. And, and the only reason for that, the only possible reason for that, is because the, the cases are rising so dramatically that these facilities are running out of tests. It's it's scary. It's really 100, scary. 128,000 cases yesterday, which is a, rec a record. There's been basically a record number of cases for three days in a row. So uh, we'll get to that. Of course, uh, somebody just made a comment. Important to remember, Trump might have been defeated. Trumpism is not going anywhere. Yeah, we've been saying that. Trumpism is not going anywhere. Frankly, I think what Trump is doing right now, which is emails and text messages calling about fraud and we need to fight, might actually create a dangerous situation. So um, I think I don't want to be dramatic, call it a new civil war. Uh, apparently there's going to be MAGA or stop the steal rallies all over the country this coming week. Um, I, as somebody who has actually covered election fraud, for those of you who followed me a couple years ago, I was on the ground in 2016 during the tw uh, New York primary when there was actually election fraud. Uh, as somebody who was on the ground in Iowa during the Democratic primary this year uh, and the whole app fiasco, to me, that was actually fraud. Mm -hmm. You look at online, they were literally just regular people, Bernie people are putting up the, um, the delegate sheets and showing that, wait a minute, they're reporting these precincts as going to Biden or Puta Judge mm -hmm. or whomever, but Bernie actually won these uh, precincts. There's actually, like, there's actual proven examples of election, election fraud that I have found. In this case, and we're, uh, unfortunately, we even have to say this to some so called progressive media there's no proven election fraud. Like, seeing things on Twitter or seeing. You know, Rudy Giuliani's r rantings at a press conference mm. or like isolated incidents here and there. That's not proof proof of anything. And I think it's unfortunate because we've seen even people in progressive media that like are so hardcore anti-Democrat that they can't, you know, can't even acknowledge that Biden won the election legitimately. I mean, I saw yeah. I won't name the channel, but I saw one channel like ranting that. It's a fact. There's there's election fraud and calling like other progressive channels like sellouts for not covering it, like basically saying we're not covering it because it would help Trump. And it's like, no, I'm not covering it because I haven't seen anything. Right. Like one like a couple machine like a county in Michigan where votes flipped from Trump to Biden because of a glitch and then the county switched it back. And apparently other counties that use the same equipment are looking at it. That's not fraud. Sometimes there's actual legitimate glitches. Well, and on an update to that story, the reporting on that is strange in any case because they now are saying it's human error. So we've said it over and over in all of our uh, post-election coverage. Absolutely. If there are instances of election fraud or voter fraud, which are of course two separate things. Call it out, report it. It, it is important to to protect uh, the integrity of our elections. But that doesn't mean just taking every single claim that the alt right puts out there and and claiming that it's news. And for those who who like to come on our chats or whatever and say, oh, you guys are, are fake news. You're not even looking into these claims of election fraud. Like you don't actually care about our um, democracy, which, by the way, we don't have a democracy. Um, but no. Do you know how many hours I've spent on freaking parlor and Breitbart? <laughs> and like, oh, I yeah, I've been looking into all these psychotic claims. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, I've been watching Rudy. I've been watching them all. Like, I am looking into this stuff. 
It's just not credible, okay? If there's something credible, we will be the first to tell you. We promise you. We promise you. If you see something credible, not crackpot sh email us info at statusquo.com. We promise you, we are here to report the facts, whether it helps Trump or whatever. Like we're, yeah, we tell you we don't like Trump, but facts are facts and election integrity is election integrity. So don't come at us and tell us we're not looking into things that I am losing sleep because I am looking into it. Because I also think like <laughs> there's some outlets that are so like, I have to be, you know, I have to be more against the Democratic Party than anyone else. That they that they get blinded and they don't look at things on a case by case basis. They just think it's fraud, period. Everything's fraud, everything. It's just hilarious to me because like, you know, if, if you don't, if you don't just push conspiracy nonsense, you're a sellout. If you made a personal decision to vote for Biden, you're a sellout. Even though I criticized Biden like till election day, it's not like I took a day off from criticizing Biden. I didn't change my coverage. I just decided to vote for him. There's just this weird extremist thing happening on the left or people that claim to be left. And like, I've seen certain channels like that are saying like, I'm more progressive than like channels like this. And like, we there's proof of um, election fraud. And I watched like 15, 20 minutes of their live stream and they offer no proof. They just offer like an isolated county in Michigan or something here as as some type of sign that there was this grand conspiracy in all the states that uh, Biden won to take it away from Trump. That's not journalism. That's just conspiratorial speculation. And it's unfortunate because some people watch it. But the truth of the matter is Biden did win. We're about to take apart the Democratic Party narrative because he didn't win for the reasons that they're claiming he won. And most importantly, Democrats in the House and the Senate didn't lose because of progressives, which they're trying to pin the blame on the defeats of corporate Democrats on socialism or defund the police, which is ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. There's two different things. You could have isolated incidents in certain counties or certain states where either intentional fraud happened or there was just glitches, right? That could be true. There was a glitch in Michigan with a county and votes did switch from Trump to Biden. The county switched those votes back to Trump. And the other counties that use the same software are looking at the software and making sure that the votes weren't wrongly switched there too. So you could have incidents, whether it's intentional or not, of of where votes were wrongly um, taken from Trump and given to Biden or where um, maybe in one area there wasn't enough legal observers. Sure, those things could be true. That's very different than what Trump, the Republicans, Rudy Giuliani, and frankly, some quote unquote progressive outlets are putting out there that there was a widespread coordinated, coordinated, um, conspiracy in many, many states to like give dead vote, you know, put give Biden the votes of dead people, of um, le keeping out election observers, uh, Republican election observers, of um, allowing more ballots that were sent in after election day. We were on the ground in Philadelphia. A lot of these people ranting about these conspiracies don't leave their home. We were just in Philadelphia. We spoke with a Republican who was inside the ballot counting. She was inside the building, the Philadelphia Convention Center, observing. She said, there's plenty of Republican legal observers. And she was a Trump supporter telling us that. She, she said, there are Republican um, observers. She said, frankly, I think Corey Lewandowski trying to storm in was a publicity mm. stunt. There was no like Republican observers being blocked from coming in because we were there. We actually spoke with a Republican observer inside the building. So this is kind of the conspiracy nonsense that unfortunately some progressives are getting wrapped up in. Two things could be true. Did they steal it from Bernie in 2016? Was there fraud? Yes! I 
I've covered that for four years. Did they did they steal it from Bernie in Iowa this year? Yes. Is in general their election fraud and the DNC rigs it against progressives? Yes. The problem is when you take that, those previous things, and you take that, and then your operating principle, not ask, not actually requiring proof, is just to say, yeah, there's fraud. It's all fraud. Every election is fraud. To just say, because you've seen some, like, I literally, we posted it this morning. I interviewed a nice guy in Philadelphia. I don't know, he seemed reasonable, who was telling me, yeah, there's fraud, because I see it on Twitter. And I asked him, like, okay, I see a lot of things on Twitter. That doesn't make it fraud. That just means people are passing shit around. But, like, as somebody who's actually exposed election fraud in the first place, like, I'm not seeing actual election fraud. I'm not seeing enough fraud and a grand conspiracy that would have flipped Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin to Trump. There's no evidence of that. And as a journalist, if you consider yourself a journalist, because you could just be a crackpot commentator going for clicks, but if you consider you're a journalist, you don't state speculation as fact. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Yeah. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.